Hey, I'm Justin B. McBride. I am at the Save Expo in Stark, Florida, which I understand to be the home of Florida's death row. And also this off-road expo, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna walk around and we're gonna go check out a bunch of rooftop tents, campers, and trailers, talk about some of the differences between them. And uh, it's all thanks to Anchor Solix, who is the sponsor of this video. Uh, let's start with rooftop tents. Welcome to my desk. While I am editing the upcoming video that you've clicked on, thank you for clicking on it, I <laughs> realized I screwed up a bunch of the audio. And uh, while I was getting a lot of the shots walking around like, like this one, there's no sound. Uh, my microphone was turned off. I was using the wireless lav. Either it was turned off or not linked. Either way, small glitch. So the rest of this video is going to be voiceover. Please enjoy. I think this is the quintessential rooftop tent. It's what most of us think of or thought of uh, five to 10 years ago when we heard rooftop tent. It's that soft shell or what I like to call a traditional rooftop tent folds away. It's a cantilever supported by a C channel. Uh, common misconception, the ladder really isn't supporting it. It does help, but there is a C channel helping to lock that cantilever in. And then it's got kind of a quasi annex. You can drop an annex. Basically it's a lot of fabric. Uh, that sounds awful in the wind. Uh, but this is what I think of first when someone says I have a rooftop tent and it's likely what you think of. Uh, is it the one I would buy today? Not at all. No, I would not buy this rooftop tent. One benefit to these traditional rooftop tents, however, is that they do have quite a bit of room in there. The mattresses can be a little bit thicker, which makes them a lot more comfortable. They are prone to condensation, however. And uh, did I mention wind noise? Man, these things suck in the wind. They are awful in the wind, and I would not want to be back inside of one of these tents ever again. And I'm glad that there is some new technology. When it comes to ladders and rooftop tents, if you see this style of ladder for a rooftop tent that you're buying in 2024, run away promptly. These are those old sliding ladders. The new ones are all telescoping. They can adjust to different ground levels. They're just a lot easier to work with. These ones here, uh, not what you wanna be running. Meet the iCamper. I think iCamper has swept the market by storm. And I say, I think when I really mean, I know it has because there are so many replicas now. And if you have a good product, you can guarantee that everybody and their dog will try and copy it and push it to the overland market. And the iCamper, well, it's done that. Uh, they're roomy inside, just like those traditional. However, when they're packed away, they're packed away into a hard case. So they're not exactly a soft shell. They're very similar in the way that they perform, where it kind of almost doubles the space, makes it roomy, large mattresses, comfy. You can see iCamper does this quilted pattern, which, you know, makes camping feel luxurious. They're honestly, they're one of the best rooftop tents out there. And do you have to buy iCamper and swallow that price tag? Not at all. There are some really good replicas, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, but iCamper, I think, when they came into the market, they really uh, woke a lot of people up. They did a big Kickstarter or something similar, and it took off like wildfire. People were just amazed at sleeping on top of your car, even though we'd been doing it forever. So they're not exactly a dime a dozen, but replicas do exist. Here's one. I don't even know the name of it. It looks very similar to what iCamper is doing. So if you're shopping for rooftop tents and you see this style, you can almost guarantee it's going to be comfortable. This one is the Alu Cab. Uh, I don't know the name, but R something, I think. Anyway, it's a wedge style tent. These are amazing. And uh, if I were purchasing a rooftop tent today, a wedge style is what I would get. Yes, there is less room. They are generally lighter, not all the time, uh, but with some brands adding a little U-bar like this one here. I don't even know who makes this one. But the idea is that you can even increase a little bit of room inside of that wedge shape. They are stupid fast to set up and take down. They generally, like I said, weigh a little bit lighter between 120, 140 pounds. Some of them get up there. I did a review on a 4x4 Colorado one where the front edge of the wedge pops up so it's not so tight in the toe box. And I think that one's like 160 pounds. So weight can vary but ease of setup is why you get a wedge tent. Man, they set up so quick, they tear down just as easy. Generally, you can keep a little bit of bedding up there. It just varies by brand, but uh, I have to say, at the Save Expo, there really weren't a lot of rooftop tents. Uh, I think 
most of what I saw were campers and trailers. So to those of you who off-road in Florida, good on you. Uh, you've taken it to the next level. Speaking of the next level, uh, a rooftop tent that has become increasingly popular and then not, and then it kind of goes in waves is what I'm trying to say, are, are these straight pop-ups. Uh, James Broud is a world-renowned brand of rooftop tents. I would call them a, a premium brand. Uh, you're going to get that uh, straight pop-up, clamshell. I mean, do you call it a clamshell if it doesn't have a single hinge? I call it clamshell because it's, it's ABS top and bottom. Uh, either way, these are quite popular because you're not stuck sleeping in one direction. So if, you know, you're kind of on a slant, you need your head higher than your feet, you can deal with that. Basically, these are some of the more expensive rooftop tents. And as you start to look at this style combined with a bed rack on a truck like we're looking at now, you're kind of getting in the price range of a budget camper. So while these are cool and a little bit more roomy in ways, you're still laying on your back to change your pants. And uh, for the money you're going to spend, I don't know if that's 100% worth it. And that's why uh, we're going to talk about campers next. However, before we talk about campers, uh, rooftop tents and how to mount them, I did see a really cool thing at the Save Expo. It is this quick release mount that works with uh, modular roof racks. So things like your your Sherpa, your, your trail racks, Prince those. Pretty cool little tool, pull a pin, you can remove or add your tent very easily without having to start turning a bunch of wrenches. So, okay, now let's talk about campers. This camper here is, uh, well, it's the Alu Cab and it's on Revere Overland's Tundra, Rob, who is my friend. Uh, he's basically who I hung around with during most of this show. Uh, so we'll get into campers. I think at this show in Florida, and maybe it's just due to proximity to uh, OK Four Wheel Drive, but the Alu Cab was everywhere. Although my microphone was broken for a uh, large portion of this video, luckily it worked for the paid portion of this video. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of food on my table with a sponsored portion from Anchor Solix. Welcome to the Save Expo. I'm here because Anchor Solix is sponsoring this video. Let's talk about him a little bit. Now you can come on over. Rob's filming. If you don't know about Rob, he has 100,000 subscribers and an Overland YouTube channel. All right, so we've talked about this on my channel before. It's gonna just follow me, so I gotta get really low. This is the Anchor Solix C800 Plus. It's a pretty neat little battery. It's 748 watt hours lithium iron phosphate. It gives you five 100 to 110 volt AC outputs on a 1200 watt inverter, 1600 watt total output with a 12 volt, two USB-Cs, two 12 watt USB-As. The USB-Cs are a 100 watt and a 30 watt. It's got a nice little display. It's got a built-in light with three modes and a hidden fourth mode if you press and hold it. SOS, Titanic is sinking. Jack could have totally fit on the door. Like if you agree. And then this magic thing isn't bug eyes or a wizard staff. It's actually lights that come with this. Hold on, I can do this. I'm an adult and they just kind of thread in here. There's a quarter 20 on the bottom of this 40 inch telescoping pole and these three mode lights magnetize onto it. See, that's how quick they magnetize. Anyways, they got three modes. They have, uh, this is called candle. This is called flashlight or uh, what do they call them in England? Reading light. Ah, that's the wrong word. Torch. Torch, uh, torch mode, thank you. This is torch. And then uh, this one here is ambient. So again, candle, torch, ambient, three modes. To change them, you press and hold real hard. And then you just, uh, they're brighter and you shall not pass. Ta-da! Another, another really cool thing about these is not only are they magnetic, but they also have a little loop so you could hangle the dangle wherever you fangle. So there you go. And they all store right here in the lid. When you put them back in, if they're on, they'll turn off and they will start charging. Ta-da! So that is the Anchor C800 Plus. There's another thing over here that we're just gonna teleport to real quick. So, uh, poof, I'm here. All right, so this one here is the C1000. I do not have this, so as much as I am well-versed on the C800 Plus, because I've done a dedicated video on it, which you can watch, um, I think it's over here. If it's not over here, it's definitely over here. Either way, you can watch that whole dedicated video on the C800 Plus. So this one, cool, has an external battery that you can add to it to add even more juice. We were just reading the sheet here, because again, I don't know enough about this. 1800 watt surge to 2400 watts. So 
not only could you make coffee, you could make a lot of coffee with this thing. You can make like two coffee, three coffees at once with three different coffee makers. So to you coffee drinkers, I don't know what that really means. It's a metric I just made up. Does it, does it stand? Does it hold <coughs> ground? Please like this video. Uh, the cool thing about all these new Anchor Solix C-Series batteries is they are pretty power dense, energy dense, power dense. They're dense. So a thousand watt hour battery is basically the size of what you were getting out of like an 800 watt hour battery a few years ago. Six ports on the front. Don't think you necessarily need so much, but now you can plug in anything you can basically think of. Power tools, refrigerators, hair dryers. I can't think of anything more. I'll rely on you for that. Okay, let's move on. So this guy right here is a 400 watt solar panel. The thing about the C800 Plus is the maximum it can take is a 300 watt solar panel. So as cool as this is, probably don't want to pair it with that, but it will pair nicely with this guy right here, which is the C1000 and it'll work with that. But other than that, look, Hanger Solix has a ton of stuff. You should probably just check out their website. It is linked in the video description. I'm gonna to continue to walk around this event and uh, look at tents and campers and trailers. All right, there you go. Thanks Anchor Solix for sponsoring. All right, back to campers. Like I was saying, the Alu Cab, uh, this one's the Alu Cabin, uh, but the Alu Cab Canopy and Alu Cab Cabin, Alu Cabin, they were everywhere. Uh, really cool systems because they are so easy to modify. There is a ton of aftermarket support for these and they're fairly roomy inside. Some disadvantages are that if you want to occupy your living space and your bed space, your sleeping space simultaneously, it's a little bit difficult because the bed is like an upper floor. So you'd have to be really short or just be happy being hunched over underneath the bed. Uh, I also found that kind of crawling into bed through the little channel at the head of the tent uh, above the door where we're looking right now, that was kind of difficult. Uh, it was a little tight, but not impossible. Uh, SHW Off-Road had a ton of stuff for these uh, insane cabinetries and living areas. And I think that if you're looking at taking your Overland build to the next level, something like the Alu Cab or some of the other campers we're going to talk about, that's the trick. Uh, I don't foresee myself ever going back to a rooftop tent because campers are so nice. Disadvantage, you do need a truck. So it does make having a camper uh, very vehicle specific. You can't just throw a, a camper on, you know, a forerunner or anything like that. As we're looking at some of these, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Uh, would you would you do this? I mean, full cabinets, the camper, setups like this, they're pushing $25,000 to add to a truck that, you know, is, is relatively small. We're looking at a Gladiator right now. I, I think it can get pretty darn expensive pretty quick. And if I weren't in the position I'm in as a uh, super mega popular overland YouTuber, I likely wouldn't have even the setup I have now with a GoFast camper, which compared to some of these would be almost a, a budget setup. Uh, so I'm curious uh, to those of you who are like 90% <laughs> of humanity and have a real job, unlike myself, is this, is this something that you're willing to spend your money on? I, I don't know. I know that with how much I camp, I would love to have something like this, something so organized and finished. Uh, but even... Even then, like, we're looking at so much money. So much money. Oh, I missed a thing. The doors on an Alu Cab. That is a huge reason to get an Alu Cab. There is something about crawling over tailgates that, boy, oh boy, I hate. <laughs> I do not want to crawl over a tailgate ever again. Alu Cab, really cool that you can uh, walk into it. I will say some of these, though, uh, they're really relying heavily on that outdoor living space, uh, which you kind of get from a rooftop tent anyway. I think uh, campers are unique when you get more of that interior living space. So I'm going to show you one uh, after this little B-roll shot here that I think did the interior living space uh, just incredibly well, also on a five-foot Gladiator bed. On this Gladiator is a four-wheel camper's Project M, and rather than being that wedge shape, it pops up vertically which gives living space above the cab of the truck. And you can even see peeking in the back seat there, they have the SHW. I think they call it the Upper Decker. That brand was everywhere and it was cool to see them uh, so prevalent at the show. But looking into the back of this, uh, I am amazed at what they were able to do with a five foot living space. 
The four-wheel camper does not have a door like the Alu Cab, which if it did, holy cow, would it be the option for everyone. However, you do get kind of a grand entrance when you don't have a door, so... I don't know, pick your poison. But looking inside of here, it's built out of 8020 aluminum extrusions. So a lightweight, durable system. They have a full size standing sink. Uh, I can't imagine the amount of thought and effort that went into building this interior where you can still occupy the bed and have that living and workspace, cook space inside. When the weather turns, the last thing you wanna do is be fighting for space inside of your very small living area. I, I have to say it looks like They've done an incredible job uh, organizing the space for the two of them. And as I was talking to them, they were saying that they're artists and they travel a lot. So getting out and and having a, a space to hide away is important to them so that they can, you know, I think she paints uh, so that she can paint while, you know, hiding from the elements when she needs to. Just real quick, another Alu Cab Canopy Camper here. Uh, I believe this is Gobi Recon. Theirs is not an SHW off-road build. This is from Goose Gear. So just another way to show how some other brands, a uh, West Coast brand in this case, uh, tackles the interiors of these. You can just see how much space there is inside of there to really fit things uh, and get organized. I think the, the little grass is a nice touch. But fridge at the back and then cabinetry around, bed folded up and away with patches in the table even stored there. Uh, the Alu Cab was... Definitely the star of Save Expo. I think they were they were just all over the place. And here's another Project M. This one is Jason Kirchie's Swell Runner. Uh, his is on a Prospector XL, so an enormous truck bed. He has room for days. But he's also kind of got a DIY uh, extruded aluminum build here. A lot more rudimentary, I'd say. But honestly, do you need to go all out? Not really. Uh, a few front runner boxes stored in those, but access to the bed above the cab again. And then plenty of room. He has a wrap on green toilet, which is uh, one of my favorite things ever. I actually did uh, an Instagram reel. It's pushing a million views right now on the current version of the wrap on toilet. And uh, short story is it uh, heat seals a bag with your um, excrement in it. <laughs> and I, I think it is the coolest thing. However, it's $1,500 for that toilet, uh, which is quite spendy. Anyways, exterior look at the uh, the Project M here. You can see that it's kind of a, a basic camper, which is what makes it really so cool because four-wheel campers, they make the gambit. Uh, you can get fully built and, and fully uh, livable campers from them. The four-wheel camper Project M is, is kind of a, a basic. Uh, walking around, I was excited to see this. This is the Ursa Minor. Uh, this was my plan when I had a Wrangler. I wanted one of these. I didn't get too close to his build just because it was kind of in between booths. Uh, but the, the concept is it's a rooftop tent camper build similar to, well, a lot of the ones we've just been looking at, but for a Wrangler. And you can get it on the JL or the JK and allegedly soon to be on the Bronco. This next camper most resembles the one that I have. Uh, I have a GoFast camper, and when I describe it to people, I like to say that it is the gateway drug to campers, and uh, this one seems to kind of fit the same bill. It's the dirt box. Think of it basically like a truck shell with a rooftop tent, and uh, it's an all-in-one where you can kind of push the bed out of the way and still stand up. doesn't have a door on the back, so it's still a tailgate and a hatch like a traditional, you know, tr truck shell truck camper depending on where you're from uh inside this one the bed pushes up and away like the alu cab does in the go fast camper it's a little bit more like a puzzle where you like a slide puzzle if you will even uh but this one pretty cool little camper uh i think for what's going on it's a uh, made in america so i think out of colorado cool little thing uh and then just as i was hanging around their booth i saw yet another project m very very popular looking uh, system next to the Alu Cab, and if I were to go nuts and start building my own, uh, I'd probably be between those two as of right now. If I were to do something similar, I did not see, however, any AT Habitats, which is still one of my all-time favorite campers and something that I've considered myself when, you know, envisioning my future camper builds. Once I can uh, escape the gateway drug that is my Go Fast camper. And the final, yeah, the big boy, the here's all your money, you've got what it takes. Uh, this is the four-wheel camper's hawk. Like I was saying earlier, four-wheel campers, you can get them built to the teeth. This is one of them. Uh, it's a full bed replacement, so it goes onto a flatbed. 
if money is no, <laughs> if money is really no object to you and comfort is everything, this is where it's at. How cool is this? I mean, you look into here, you see this full build out, uh, kitchenette, uh, cooking top, sinks, everything you could kind of imagine you would need in compact living right inside of here. I, I wish I had space to store something like this, or maybe, I don't know, you just sell everything and move into this thing. When it comes to off-road trailers, I have to be honest with you. I am not an expert. And I'm not an expert mostly because I don't want to offend you, but I don't see the need. Uh, as someone who has even a five-foot truck bed with a camper on it, I would much rather have an all-in-one compact system than have to tow something. That said, I'm trying to understand better. <laughs> I can see why having the luxuries of a full sink and all that that you get here is really nice. However, it's still exterior cooking and, and cleaning. Uh, so if it's cold, windy, full of bugs, you're still fighting those elements. Um, I don't know. The appeal for me personally, it isn't there. Uh, inside of the trailers, the beds are, uh, they're good sized beds, but you're, you don't have the headroom. So you're still changing on your back like you would in, you know, a $900 rooftop tent. Like are, is spending the money for a trailer really, really worth it at this point? I, I can't, t I can't say, uh, <laughs> and, and I just think you look at like that last, uh, camper we saw from four wheel campers you could spend the money for that or you could spend the money on some of these trailers. Like some of these trailers are, damn man, they get ridiculously expensive. I mean, we're talking close to a hundred grand on some of them, which that setup is in that same range. So if you, if you're building a dedicated expedition vehicle, I don't understand building a trailer when you could build a dedicated vehicle. That's an all in one platform. Okay. That's out of the way. That said, budget options do exist like this RT3. Uh, this is really just a rooftop tent on what I would say is like bed bars on top of a small trailer platform where you could put a small electrical system, an awning, a kitchen in the back, you know, have a little bit of room to store some, some extra camp gear. I, while I don't want one, I can see the appeal of just hook it up and drive away. And that stuff's not always bolted to your vehicle as you're driving around on your daily totally get that. So you, you don't look like one of those <laughs> internet YouTube guys that always has junk bolted to his truck. I'm talking about myself. Uh, so I get that. But I also, as the guy who has all this junk bolted to his truck, I don't have to connect a trailer. I don't have to worry about it. is the trailer loaded. Any of that stuff, I just turn a key and go. Well, I push a button and go. Again, exterior cooking. So you're still kind of out in the elements, which I mean, that's a good reason. That's kind of why we get out there. I've gotten to a point where I think that cooking inside of a camper, man, that would be a dream. There have been so many times where I'm out and yeah, bugs are nuts. The wind is starting to whip or it's just too cold to do dishes and, and the water's freezing to the dishes as you're trying to clean. I would much rather try and build this into a camper myself and probably spend about the same amount of money, honestly. Then again, uh, these are probably easier to finance. So for those of you who, you know, need a little assistance in, in affording adventure, there you go. Uh, but even then I say, start small, figure out what you really need before you go nuts, but we're all different. There's clearly a market for these and the market is, I mean, it, the sky's the limit, just like on anything with the word overland on it. But some of these, they are so nice. And what I will say is walking around, looking at these trailers, they are some of the most creative people out there. They have figured out exactly how to, to, to play Overland Tetris, to fit a refrigerator, a table, the right amount of drawers. You can even see in this one, they've got a radio back there, red arc screen. So there's a lot going on that they've figured out that if you're building your truck or even your own trailer, there is so much inspiration in the genius of the people building trailers because they have figured out how to fit so many things into such a small platform and just utilize every inch. It's like those really cool videos of, of Japanese uh, apartments that you watch where, you know, the couch folds into the table and then that then folds into a desk and then that folds into, I don't know, a laundry basket or whatever. <laughs> That's how I think a lot of these trailers are and the folks designing them and building them they are doing an incredible job. So while I say I don't see the need for myself personally, that doesn't mean I'm discounting the hard work and ingenuity that's going into some of these because there, there is plenty of information. 
that you can glean from what's going on in an adventure trailer like the one we're looking at here. When it comes to trailers, there were a few unique ones, like this one here is pretty tall. So you, you climb into it from a back door where there's a drop down uh, annex awning room, kind of like a traditional rooftop tent. It was cool, the bed looked comfortable, there was plenty of storage. Uh, but again, I don't know if the money's really worth it. Like, is the juice worth the squeeze, as they say? Personally, I don't see it. I, I mean, that looks comfortable. Looks like it'd be a little cozy in there. Uh, I don't know. If, if you're into trailers, I'm open to hearing what why. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know why, why a trailer for you. Or, you know, even if you're into rooftop tents instead of campers. Whatever it is, let me know. I will say that this trailer here was probably my favorite one. Uh, it was kind of a toy hauler and livable area. So it, it was like a traditional pop-up camper, kind of like what we were looking at with those four-wheel campers, the Project M's. So you sleep above on all the gear, and then you do have standing room at the foot where you could stand up and get dressed or whatever you need to do. It was cool to see they had a little desk and stuff built in here. I think this one, of all the adventure trailers I saw, this one kind of made the most sense to me. Uh, it was cool to see all the stuff that you could cram into it. And again, have standing room, place to hide from the elements, comfortable place to sleep. If you're looking at adventure trailers, this checks a lot of the boxes that I would want. It gives that kind of camper experience that I love where you could build this out and you could do some of that extruded aluminum builds in here pretty easily. Anyway, I think this one was cool. However, when you look at it compared to what you could do with, I mean, one of those $25,000 camper builds on a Gladiator, you're walking away with uh, with quite a bit of excess funds for your adventures, spending about half that to build out, uh, you know, an, an alu cab on a Gladiator or even, you know, a larger platform like the Tundra or what other, whatever other full size you like. So that was kind of it. That's, that's the, uh, that was the Save Expo. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Justin with a working microphone again. So Justin, take it from here. Fun fact, it is now raining. So I think that's the end of the video. So uh, if you liked the video, please like the video. If you have a question, leave me a comment. And if you want to hang out again, well, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Justin B. McBride. Hey, thanks for uh, joining me for my video and seeing me way far away from you in the rain. Uh, I do have another video ready for you. It's this one. It's like an hour and a half of me, well, on an adventure. And I'd love for you to join me. I'll see you over there.